Hey folks, it's Marcus von Vaden back here with another Vaden Tips video. This week, we're going to talk about sending web push notifications from a Java server. Now, web push notifications are those little notifications you get on your phone or on your desktop letting you know something important has happened. So maybe you order something online and you get a shipping notification with a tracking number you can follow. Or maybe you have a business app telling you your expense report got denied for whatever reason and you need to go back in and fix that. So the power of push notifications is that it allows you to let people know that something important has happened, even if they don't have that web app open at the moment. So maybe it's in a tab somewhere kind of deep within the other tabs uh, on their browser, or maybe they don't have it open at all. But with web push notifications, you're able to send a message out to that user, regardless, letting them know that something important has happened. Now, in order to use web push notifications, we need a couple of things. We need a browser that supports them. So that would be Chrome, uh, Firefox, or Edge. And we need a server uh, part. So for that, we, we're going to use a Java web push library. On the browser, this relies on a couple of technologies. So first of all, the notification API. So that's kind of the API that actually shows the notifications on our screen. The second API that we need is a service worker. So if you're not familiar with the service worker from before, it's essentially this JavaScript that sits between your application and the network. And more kind of commonly it's used for caching things so that your app can kind of stay fast and work reliably even if you're offline. But it can also be used for receiving uh, push notifications. So even if your app is not open, the browser is able to kind of activate the service worker to show that uh, notification to you. And then depending on user interaction, the user can then use that to highlight or open the application again to kind of jump right in to where you need them to be. So let's take a look at a sample application on how we can do this end to end, how we can subscribe to notifications in the browser, how we store those on the server, and how we use those subscriptions to then send out notifications to users. All right, so before we get into the actual code, let's take a look at the application and how it works so we better understand the, the, the flow here. So we have a button here for subscribing to notifications. And when I click on it, you'll get a prompt here asking you for permission to show notifications. Now, if the user clicks on block here, what happens is that you lose the ability to re-ask them for permission ever again. So you need to be very mindful of when you ask for permission. Put this somewhere in the settings, like at a toggle button for enabling notifications so that when they see that permission prompt, they know why it's there, what it's for, and they're going to be much more likely to, to accept it. The only way to kind of override that is to go into the settings and then either putting it back to the default ask or to allow. So let's go back to kind of the initial state and click on subscribe and click allow. Now what happens is that we generate a subscription that's unique to this user and this application and we store that on the server. The server will, in this case, ping every 15 seconds and send a notification to our browser. So even if I'm looking at, say, the Java web push library here, and I don't have the application open, I get this notification. And when I click on it, I can use that to go back into the application right where I left off. I can then click on unsubscribe to actually kind of stop getting those notifications. Once I've uh, given permission for notifications, the next time I click on subscribe, we won't get that uh, prompt for, for permissions. Now, if we take a look at the code, we'll start on the server and just look at the kind of heart of sending these messages. Like I mentioned, I'm using this uh, Java web push library. You can find it on GitHub and I'll add a link to it. It's a fairly simple uh, library and I've added the dependency to my Palm XML already. And the kind of important parts here are a push service, which takes in a public private key pair. I've generated those keys using this uh, NPM package called web push and generate vapid keys there. You can run it through MPX and it will generate you this public private key pair. 
I've stored those in an environment file and loaded those and by doing that I can then uh, inject the values here through a spring so I have the public key and the private key I've created a push service and I'm inside of a message service that's specific to my application here so I'm in a spring uh, service class after constructing it we'll uh, initialize the push service and then we have a couple of service methods here so one is for getting the public key because the client will need that to set up that subscription then we have two methods one for subscribing and one for unsubscribing and in this case I'm just storing all the subscriptions in a list so I'm just adding that subscription to a list then we have a method for showing notifications which uses the push service to send a new notification the notification takes in the subscription so that's kind of all the details we need to send a message to that specific client and then a JSON containing the message in my case I have a scheduled method here firing every 15 seconds sending a snippet of JSON with a title of service as hello and then a body of its now and then interpolated a local time showing what time it is right now then I've created a VOD Fusion endpoint for connecting to my client, so co communicating between the browser and the server. I've injected the message service here, so I have access to that, and I exposed three methods to the client. One for getting the public key, one for subscribing, taking in a subscription. The subscription is the same object from that uh, web push library, so it contains the endpoint URL and a set of keys. The keys is essentially a uh, collection of a authorization and a B256 uh, DH uh, string. And then we have an unsubscribe that we can use for unsubscribing to this. So that's the server API. We can subscribe to, uh, to messages by passing in a subscription and unsubscribe by letting uh, the server know which endpoint we wanna unsubscribe from. The endpoint is essentially a unique URL that we can use as a key. So that gets us to the client side here, to the client view. So here I'm in a Bond Fusion view, so it's based on lit element in TypeScript. I have a couple of pieces of state here for my application. One is keeping track of the denied, denied property, so you remember if I clicked on block, it would deny that for me. So I initialize it to checking by checking notification.permission. And if it's equal to denied, I know that it's denied and I can show the user this helpful thing, letting them know that they should go and re-enable it. Then we have a state uh, that tracks whether or not we are currently subscribed to something. And then we have the public key that we need for subscribing to new notifications. Then, depending on if we're subscribed or not, we're showing either a message saying that we're subscribed and a button for unsubscribing, or a message saying that we're not subscribed and a button that will call the subscribe method. So what I wanna do on the first update here is just check if we already have a subscription from before. So I'm gonna use the service worker registration to check if there is a existing subscription. I'm using the double negation here to just cast it to a Boolean. So either it's a true or a false. If we are subscribed, that's great. We don't need to do anything else. And then the other thing I do is I fetch the public key uh, through this endpoint method and store it here. Now the meat of the client side here is in the subscribe method. So when we click on subscribe, we need to do two things. First, we need to request permission to show notifications. We can do that through this notification.request permission. That's gonna return either denied or granted or the default value, but essentially since we're doing a question with a Boolean answer, it's gonna be either denied or, or granted. And if the user grants permission, we can take the next step, which is to set up that push connection. 
And the way we do that is again, we get the service worker registration. And from there, we get the push manager and call subscribe. Subscribe takes in an options object with two things. So the first is user visible only. So we need to tell the push manager that we're going to be responsible users and only use push for showing user visible notifications. The idea behind this is that because a incoming push message activates the service worker and runs some code, they want to make sure that we don't use that for running all kinds of background tasks that don't that aren't visible to the end user. So we need to let the service worker know that we're only going to use this for showing visible notifications. There are other APIs for updating things in the background that are more appropriate for that. The other thing that we need to send is the public key. Uh, this needs to be a uint8 array. For some reason, the API is a little weird. So you, you'll need to copy this kind of conversion that takes in a base64 string that we have and turns it into a, uh, into a uint8 array. So when we call this, what happens is that the browser goes out to a push server that's depending on what browser you're using. So in Chrome, it's going to call Google's push server, letting them know that we want to we want to create a new push connection for this public key in this application. Uh, well, this uh, kind of browser and this public key. And if that succeeds, we get a subscription. And let's take a look at what that subscription actually contains. So I'll open up my browser here, uh, or the dev tools, and I've console logged the stringified version here. So if I click on subscribe, you'll see that we get a object here that contains the endpoint. So this is a unique URL for my specific browser, the public key of the application. So this is something that identifies this pair of server and browser uh, uniquely. And that's something that we can use for sending out that message. It also include, includes the keys that we have in the subscription. So this is essentially the same signature as the subscription object that we take in here in the message endpoint. And because it is that, I'm doing a little bit of a <laughs> weird dance here with first calling JSON stringify subscription and then parsing it back to a JSON object. The reason I'm doing that is that on the subscription object itself, the keys are stored as uint8 arrays, and I want to serialize them to base64. And that's essentially the easiest way of doing it. Otherwise, it would be a little bit more, more work. So the end result of all of this is that I get an object that matches this subscription. Uh, the subscription signature. So we get an endpoint and we get the keys. And we send that over to the server. So once the server receives that again, we send that to the message server, the message server saves that to our subscriptions. And then every 15 seconds, the scheduled method goes through all the subscription and sends a message. And you can see it here. Now, what happens in the browser when that message comes in is that the service worker has an event listener for the push event. And in that listener, what I'm doing is I'm reading the data from that event and calling JSON on it to parse it as JSON. And if I have some data, I'm going to use uh, the service worker registration again to call show notification. And I'm, I'm pulling the data out of the JSON object. So I'm using title, and then I'm setting the body. There are a bunch of other things that you can set here, like an image and an icon and, and uh, things like that. In this case, I'm not going to worry too much about those. The other part that we need to, to handle here is what happens when the user clicks on the notification. So there's another event listener we can add for that, which is notification click. And what I do there is I close the notification and then I focus or open a window. So I want to see, first of all, 
the URL for my complete URL for my application for the URL that I want to open. Then I query all the windows that I have open for this origin. So I can't see like all the different tabs a user has open, only the ones that are open to my origin. And then I can see, do I already have a tab open on this specific URL in this case, just the uh, root URL. If I do, I'm going to call focus on that. So I'm just going to focus the existing tab, not open new one. If I don't have a existing uh, tab open, I can open a new one so the user can click on it and get a new window. So that's essentially what we need in order to make all of this work. So even if I close the window now and I wait for the notification to show up, I can click on it and it's going to open it up. In this case, I had already uh, installed the application as a PWA. So you can see that it by default prefers to use, uh, open up the app as an app instead of in the browser. But if you have a open browser uh, window with that tab, it will open that as well. All right, so there you have it. Quite a lot of code to make this happen. There are a couple of wonky APIs, not, not entirely intuitive, but it's still fairly straightforward to do. And there's a lot of user value if you do this correctly. Now, you need to be very mindful of how you use push notifications because they can get very annoying very fast if you send unwarranted notifications for all kinds of small stuff. So please be responsible when you use notifications and they're a very powerful tool. I'll leave links to all the kind of source code and, and libraries that I use in the description below. If you have any questions on how this works, if you have any ideas for additional videos that you want to have on the topic or another topics, let me know in the comments below again. And thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.